This might just be one of my favorite phones that I've tested in the last little while. I don't know what it is, but Google's had an interesting run this year, entirely changing my view about their smartphone lineup. I was a big fan of the Pixel 8 Pro, so much so that it became my daily driver, only to really be replaced by the S24 Ultra. Admittedly, the power is really important to me. That being said, Google's Pixel Launcher with clean stock Android, along with its ability to use incredible AI features, have made these devices so compelling for me. To be honest, I wasn't really expecting to like the Pixel 8 as I'm not really a fan of compact devices. Though after just recently spending some time with the S24, I've opened up a little bit. And I do realize there's a lot to like about a form factor that's this compact. Google's Pixel 8 is rocking a 6.2 inch OLED display. And thankfully this year, they've opted for a refresh rate of 120 Hertz at 1080p. With a pixel density of 428 pixels per inch and a respectable 2000 nit peak brightness, the Pixel 8 holds its own surprisingly well, especially when you consider the price. By the way, never buy this phone at MSRP. I was able to find this thing $200 off here in Canada, and it seems like that's been happening almost every other week. Not to mention, you can get lucky and have it bundled with a Pixel Watch, or at least a discount on other Google products, so just hold out if you are interested in this phone. Covered with Corning Gorilla Glass Victus, the Pixel 8 display is not just beautiful to look at, but it also feels good in the hand. And this has flagship levels of scratch and drop resistance. Everything that I've done on this phone feels silky smooth. And when it comes to content, no matter what you enjoy, everything pops with infinite contrast and great colors. There are definitely times where I wish the display was a tad bigger, as there are times where I want to just be consumed by the content that I'm watching but I do understand that not everyone wants a larger display, and I'm happy that phones like these two here exist for that reason. I think this is where I should get the worst part out of the way though, and that's the chipset. Okay, listen, I don't wanna give Google flack for wanting to build their devices on their own chipset. I think in the future, we can really reap the benefits from this. However, the Tensor G3 inside of the Pixel 8 just doesn't cut it in my opinion. Truthfully, this is the only reason I switched from dailying my Pixel 8 Pro, as I'm someone who enjoys the occasional game, and I do my fair share of Lightroom edits and exports on my device. It's not that the Tensor can't do it, but in some titles, especially titles that haven't been optimized for this chipset, like Call of Duty Mobile when I purchased this phone at launch, the performance was laughable. And while I didn't experience the overheating issues on my Pixel 8 Pro, I found this Pixel 8 to get quite warm to the touch, doing some relatively modest tasks. Look, it's not the biggest of deals ever, and there truthfully are some benefits to Tensor, like some on-device AI prompts. But for an AI-focused SoC, a lot of Google's most fascinating features are all done via the cloud. When it comes to Tensor and its performance, I couldn't really recommend this to anyone that does any serious gaming on their device, and I know that's not what everyone is here for, but I think it's worth the heads up. Before we go any further though, a like and a sub to the channel is always appreciated. I just want to say thank you so much for 30,000 subscribers. I can't believe we've made it this far and your support it honestly means the world. Where Google's really excelled this year though with the Pixel 8 is the sheer comfort. I seriously cannot tell you how bad I wish the S24 Ultra shared these pebble-like curves and edges. The phone really does just feel like an extension of your everyday life. For example, I was out filming a day in the life with the Pixel 8 and I was surprised by how much I didn't notice this phone on me. I didn't feel it in my pocket, getting in and out of the car was fine because I wasn't getting jabbed by sharp corners if I moved awkwardly, and when it came to actually using the phone, it was just super pleasant. The way these edges curve into the palm of your hand make me really feel like Google's put a lot of thought into the actual form of this device. And for a smartphone, I think that's really important. Though the design isn't perfect, and I'm glad that Google's put a matte finish on the rear of the Pixel 8 Pro, as it made the phone feel very premium. It doesn't catch a ton of fingerprints, and it doesn't feel grimy at all. But the Pixel 8's non-frosted back glass feels like plastic, and I wish I was kidding. I tried out the Pixel 6a when it was released, which was plastic, and these two feel very similar in the hand. It's not the end of the world, and I'm sure most of you will be using a case on this phone, but it's crazy how much things like this change the perception of this device. The materials aren't dissimilar to the more expensive Pixel 8 Pro, but this makes the phone feel more like a toy in comparison. And if that offends you, I'm sorry, but I'm just telling it how it is. Though, don't get me wrong at all, Google's far more than made up for some of the Pixel 8 shortcomings in the camera department, which 
arguably has become the most important thing for consumers in recent years. There's two sensors on the rear, a 50 megapixel wide, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and both look great. But that 50 megapixel sensor here on the Pixel 8 is perfect. The resolution, the depth captured by the low aperture, and the color science behind Google's camera is what I would call a slam dunk, and it is by far my favorite shooter out of every phone that I've used. Personally, I wish that Google would have included the five times telephoto that we'd seen on the Pixel 8 Pro rather than an ultra wide, but I'm sure there's some business reason as to why they couldn't make that work, whether that would be for boosting the Pixel 8 Pro sales or that they just couldn't fit it in this phone. But what's nice about this 50 megapixel camera being the same as the Pixel 8 Pro, however, is that I can show you some image examples from when the weather was actually nice outside so you can get an idea for how this will look in optimal conditions. The thing is though, is that it's really not just the photo department that Google's really impressed me with, but the video this year was amazing. When these devices launched, I had hope for video on Android, which is something that I couldn't say for the last few years. To be honest, when it comes to video on my phone, I've always been in a toss up. Carry an iPhone, which I don't enjoy, or use an Android phone and suck it up. Though the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro gave me the hope that I needed with great smooth video, amazing colors, and even audio that sounds pretty good. It's also kind of insane because you can take out the background noise like droning traffic and wind just all at the touch of a button. Hell, even the front facing camera looks pretty good. It does lack autofocus. It's only 10.5 megapixels, and don't get me wrong, it doesn't look the best in low light, but in good lighting conditions, the quality of images and video that you can get out of it are up to par with some of the more expensive flagships. Now, there are a couple of downsides that I wanted to list about the phone before I continue to talk so positively about Google's Pixel 8. The Pixel 8 only comes with UFS 3.1 storage, which is far less efficient and much slower than UFS 4.0. The charging speed, despite being 27 watts, is pretty slow. Sometimes it takes up to two hours for a full charge. The fingerprint reader is reliable, it works well, but I find it to be quite slow sometimes, making unlocking the device in a hurry kind of a hassle. And I've also found that whilst charging, the Pixel 8 does get quite warm, not something to worry about, but it does make me wonder about the battery health over the next few years. Something that I am kind of worried about considering this device has seven years of software support, which is a good thing. Let's talk about the battery though, because I was surprised. The Pixel 8 is using a 4,575 milliamp hour cell, which is quite large for the size of this device. The S24, for example, only has a 4,000 milliamp hour cell, and the S24 Ultra, despite being this much larger, only really has a few hundred extra milliamp hours compared to the Pixel 8. And considering that, it's insane when you put these two together and realize just how much larger the S24 Ultra is. And when it comes to the Pixel 8, this does translate into battery life. I found that I was able to get five to six hours of screen on time. And after comparing my results with what I found online, it does seem to stack up well, with some even reporting up to eight to nine hours. Granted, there are things that you can do to make this phone last much longer if you really need the extra juice throughout the day, like turning off the 120 Hertz refresh rate, turning off Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, whatever it is that you need to do to make it to stretch. Though. I don't do that on any of my phones because I actually review them. I wanna tell you what the out of box experience is like with these things. And to be honest, I actually think the five to six hours of screen on time is more than enough for my needs. However, I think where Google really hammers the Pixel 8 home is with those AI features I brought up earlier. Magic Eraser 2.0 video boost, and other camera editing tweaks that allow you to get the most out of your images with AI generative fill. And I think the most important part, while the experience can be a little clunky and slow, the results are amazing. But it's things like call screening that make this phone better than a lot for me. As I deal with a ton of spam callers, being able to have an assistant on the other end answer the phone for me to screen the person on the other line is an absolute game changer and I just wish that every phone had this. Also new with the latest feature drop is circle to search, which I love dearly on the S24 Ultra. However, I think the most underrated, criminally underrated feature of the Google Pixel 8 is being able to transcribe your voice memos in real time. I cannot tell you how clutch this feature came when I was speaking out loud 
trying to get scripts done for videos. You're able to transcribe an entire voice memo, even separating the people talking, and it does so pretty damn well. You can even copy and paste what was said into another app like Notion if you wanted to add stuff to your reminders or notes. When I use this feature, I just copy and paste stuff into my Google Docs so that I have something to look over when I'm actually writing the review. This is where Google is ahead of literally everyone else for me. You know, I've really enjoyed my time spent with the Pixel 8. And if you want to see a day in the life video with this phone, I'll link it down below. If it's not out yet, I messed something up obviously, but it, it will be up soon. I'm really looking forward to what Google is cooking up next. If you want to see more in-depth, long-term reviews about the Pixel 8, let me know and I'll rock this device for 30 whole days and let you know what I think. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and don't forget to subscribe. Peace out.